Welcome back. It's the Flow Sports Hour on Flow FM. The Border Town and Districts Basketball Association wrapped up their season on the weekend with a lot of activities and a lot of headlines out of Grand Final Day. And Sally Bywater from the association is joining me to tell us all about it. How are you, Sally? Great to have you back on Flow. I'm very well. And yeah, it was very exciting for our season to conclude on a great note over the weekend. Well, it's nearly time for you and I to get back into our regular routine of uh, talking netball each week, and we will get to that shortly. But, uh, yeah, in the meantime, uh, the the summer chapter of your sporting life is sort of wrapping up with basketball winding down. So, uh, yeah, let's go through the weekend. Uh, It was the under-12s kicking things off on Friday afternoon with their round robin. So uh, they don't have grand finals as such. They sort of just play out uh, a bunch of games on on the Friday Arvo. They do, yes. So they've got, yeah, there's four um, under-12 girls teams and six under-12 boys teams. So they have a round robin on Friday. So all playing each other in some short, modified games and having a great time and finishing off their season. And I'm really sure they earned their zooper doopers at the end of that. So it was great to see (laughs) our, yeah, probably nearly 50 to 60 kids running around on Friday afternoon. I'm sure some of the seniors were probably uh, envious of the juniors. It's good getting a trophy or a medal when you win something, but uh, I reckon a lot of them might have preferred an ice cream or a Zupa Dupa. Oh, absolutely. The weekend we had over the, the weather over the weekend too, and yeah, I know as soon as they lined up for their Zupa Dupas on Friday, they really wanted them. So yeah, I'm pretty sure the seniors might have enjoyed them yesterday as well. Oh, sensational. Well, <laughs> great stuff to the under 12s playing that out on Friday afternoon. A great way to kick off. Uh, a busy weekend, and from there it went to the senior presentation night on Friday night. We did. We had our conclusion of the season there, so it was very exciting. And out of the, our three of our four senior grades, three of them went down to the final round for the winner of the awards on those. So there was one vote separating in the A grade men, the A, B grade men, and the B grade women, which was fantastic to see in a close count. And we also had a couple of other um, presentations on the night. We had Wendy Stoudy receive life membership of our association. So she's been um, recognised for outstanding service over 25 years, which included 20 years as canteen management and nine years as treasurer. So that's a fantastic achievement. Sensational. It certainly is. And it's uh, so important to recognise life members of any organisation like that, especially when they're doing things like canteen work, that sometimes it can be uh, very hard to find people to do those jobs. So uh, congratulations. That's very well deserved. And then from Friday night, it went to uh, the Working Bee on the Saturday. Was there anything significant happening here for the association? Yeah, so we had a great working bee on Saturday morning with about 15 to 20 people rocking up for that. So that was great to see and getting the cam, everything um, ready for the day. So cleaning the courts, cleaning the outside of the stadium, um, making sure our honour boards were all up to date, stocking the canteen and just a lot of cleaning. So it was fantastic to see everyone available for that and come along. Well, very uh, well and truly on top of everything there, having the working bee to get everything perfectly in order uh, before the big day, that's uh, yeah a lot more organised than I think even a lot of uh, metro sporting competitions are at times. So yes, well done to everyone involved with that. And then of course, like you said, it led into uh, grand final day uh, yesterday. So talk us through some of the winners here, Sally. Yeah, so we had our grand final day for kicking off at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, which was... Um our under-6 mixed competition and under-14 girls competition. These are fantastic games to start our day. In the under-16 mix, we had Orange 38 defeating Royal 37, so that went right down to the wire. And on the other court at the same time, in the under-14 girls, we had Pink 41 defeat Sky 40. So two one-point games to start the day was just, yeah, fantastic. Unbelievable. That m- must have been uh, uh, some nervous spectators in the building. Oh, absolutely. I was scoring on one of the courts and you could barely even hear anything between the two courts and, yeah, just the spectators, the coaches, the players. And, yeah, I really take my hats off to the referees in these games as well. They um, did a great job. So, but very exciting stuff. And, yeah, every child out there would be fantastic on the court. Well done. Well, I'm a sucker for a big sporting moment. So uh, tell me, was there a a game-winning shot or a a game-winning defensive play or anything significant like that in any of these close games? Yeah, I believe so. In the under-14 girls, it got down to one team scores, so they were one point up. The other team, then someone fouled, and then they got the score. And yeah, so that was fantastic to see. And yeah, to have just go head to head. And in the under-16 mixed comp, that was just yeah, good hard defensive work that really got them through the got that win for them. 
incredible stuff, memories that will last a lifetime for uh, some of those juniors involved with that. And then that takes us into uh, the seniors. What was the story there? And another slate of close games or, or not so much? Not so much. Our under-14 boys was our next game. That was Black 41 defeating Royal 39. So that was a great yeah, end to our finish with our juniors. So fantastic to see. We went to the men's B grade and the women's B grade. So in the men's B grade, Shana's 25 defeated Red 15. So a very low scoring affair here. Um, and obviously real slog on the court. So, yeah, Shana's in the win there by 10 points. And in the women's B grade, this is our closest senior game of the day, which was TTT 26 defeating Panthers 21. So... Uh, really low scoring games, but they were yeah in hot conditions. They did really well. And were most of those results uh, semi expected, or were any of them big upsets on the day? Um, in the, the two seniors there, that were the two top teams that won those games. And in the three junior grades, it was actually the second team. So all the top teams actually didn't quite make it in the end. So. Yeah, fantastic, and we're really good to go into our finals. All right, and then that is it for uh, the 2023-24 summer season. And uh, what happens now in Bordertown basketball? I suppose everyone goes off and plays footy or netball for the winter. It does actually change into a bit of winter sport. We do have a winter season, and that starts on the week of the 20th of May. So we will be having another competition that runs for 10 weeks. So. And we, just, we do that all on one night and everyone sort of plays together in the seniors and in the juniors have a couple of grades. So it's really good and yeah, you keep your basketball skills up as well as probably playing your football, your netball, your hockey and whatever else is on. So, yeah, we really enjoy our 12-month summer winter seasons of basketball. Yes, yeah, so those that do go and play footy and netball and hockey and everything else, they still come and play <laughs> basketball on top of that? Yeah, we do have a few. It's a much less competition, but yeah, probably, probably still have another about 100 people coming out to play in winter, which will be really, yeah, it's, it's great for our little town here. Fantastic. Well, it never stops. And uh, yes, it is uh, the end of the summer season now and, and into winter, but for some, it's certainly an all year round commitment. Sally, let's get into the winter sports now. And it's not too long until uh, KNT Netball kicks off and we will be having our weekly uh, catch-ups for the Friday sports show. But in the meantime, uh, yes, it's it's only about a month away before it all starts. It is. I can't believe that either. Like the 13th of April isn't that far away. It's probably only about four weeks away. And we've obviously had people start their pre-season trainings and now they're probably into selections and, yeah, really starting to hit the, the courts and really get ready for that winter season. Yeah, not long to go, and I'm sure there's been a lot of uh, really hard pre-season training. Uh, what's making headlines around the league as we get into the season? Have we uh, still got all the same teams lining up? So we have had a bit of a change in our um, teams this year. We still have our four senior grades in the A grade, A reserves, B grade and C grade, but unfortunately we have taken the decision this season to drop one of our division grades in the juniors, so we just have the division one and the division two and our 13 and under A, B and C. So just the five junior grades and the four senior this year. So just a lot of teams struggling with some numbers and, yeah, just to get kids on the court. We hope that we can still do that with just one less junior team. But, yeah, still plenty of kids around. Certainly not a, a problem that's exclusive to the uh, K&T Association either. There's a lot of uh, a lot of leagues struggling for numbers and, and having to lower some of their participation levels as, as there aren't as many players coming out. But not too disastrous here in the K&T, which is good. And uh, in the senior grades, how are Kingston looking? I know there was uh, maybe some talk of them not having an A or a B grade team in. Uh, how's that all looking? Yeah, so at this stage, they're probably only going to be able to fill the three senior sides. At this stage, we're not sure which grade they won't be having. But, yeah, there's hopefully between where our March and April meetings, they might have been able to recruit some players. But, yeah, they have lost from their A grade last year, that which was their first A grade team they had in for a few years. They've probably lost about five or six players. So when you're probably losing three quarters of a team, it is really hard and detrimental in those numbers. And, yeah, we hope to, they can get as much as they can, but we'll wait and see at our next meeting and see which grade they're going to drop. But yeah, at this stage, there'll be one club that's only got the three senior teams. All right. Well, if anyone from Kingston is uh, tuning in and keen to go and play netball, don't be shy. Get out and uh, get in touch with the club. I'm sure they would love to have anyone they can get their hands on. We'll keep an eye on that as it goes on. But uh, moving on to Panola, the, the reigning premiers, uh, I'm sure they're looking to go back-to-back. -back. Are they going to be coming back uh, pretty strong again in season 2024? Yeah, it'll be an interesting one. I do hear they have lost a few players, and I think that's probably gone down to the Mount Gambier leagues because they've got really healthy junior numbers. Um, they were one of the teams that could get all three junior grades on the 
park and they've lost a few from that. But I also have heard a little whisper that a few of their premiership side have also left them. So they've probably lost about three of them, So which is a big hole, but they've got great depth. So I'm sure they'll still go well this year for that title back-to-back. All right. Well, it'll be uh, interesting. We certainly won't be penciling them in to, to go back-to-back <laughs> if they're coming in with a whole new team. And, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how... Uh, some of the other teams from up near the top last year will be uh, viewing that as well. Has there been much change to any of those other finalists from last year? No, I don't think. I think those finalist teams, I think, yeah, Keith have probably recruited a couple. They're always quite strong and they're always up there. So they'll be, yeah, obviously up there again in the top five this year. I think the dark horse this year might be Mandala, who finished out of the finals, but they have recruited quite well. Um, our next local Mandala girl, Emily Bird, she's come back to coach them. So she's done really well over in Eden Hope the last few seasons, winning a best and fairest for the league. So I'm pretty sure she's going to hopefully bring a couple, maybe new recruits with her. So they'll be quite strong this year. All right. An interesting year ahead for Mandala then. There'll certainly be one to watch. And Emily grew up in Mandala, like you said. So uh, I assume she's played some netball for the club previously and, and probably had some other involvement as well. Yeah, she has. She played with a junior netball with Mandala and played a bit of senior before heading off to Adelaide where she played a little bit there for the Thunderbirds and for Matrix in the Premier League down there. And then, yeah, so she, her family's still here, so it's her home, So yeah, which is really good for her. Excellent. Well, a very big get for Mandala, so they'll certainly be uh, one to watch when we do get into the season. And uh, you, you just mentioned she played for the Thunderbirds. Of course, there's a lot of girls from this area that go out and uh, mm-hmm. get to the Thunderbirds or, or join the Thunderbirds Academy. Uh, have, have we got any new players going to that Thunderbirds Academy? Yeah, so this season, Piper Stenner has um, been successful in making the Thunder, Adelaide Thunderbirds Academy, which is a fantastic effort for her. And Piper's a previous Kingston player. She's actually not playing for Kingston this year, which will be a big hole for them because she's moved to Adelaide to play in Adelaide at the Premier League down there, So, which is a big stepping stone for her, which was great to see. Plenty to look forward to in KNT Netball. All kicks off on the 13th of April. And Sally, it's not much rest for you, is it, between the basketball and the netball seasons? No, it certainly feels like it's going from one to the other and I think it's just good now to get the lap over completed. So, yes, for this year, we've finished the basketball so now we'll start into the netball completely. All right, well, we're certainly all very, very excited for the winter sports season to kick off and, uh, yes, we're right in that transition period. We're almost there. It's very exciting times in local sport. Sally, thanks very much for coming on and giving us all that info. It's always great to speak with you, and we will speak again soon as the netball season gets nice and close. Sounds great. Thank you very much.